I'm Ivy Cohn, and this is Fuki Cafe. Today we're going to be talking about what I like to call Night Shining Dragon's Breath. To put it in the correct term, Noctilucent Clouds. Noctilucent means night shining, and the increase in these night shining clouds since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution has more than doubled. The culprit? Methane. Recently I had the opportunity to sit and chat with Professor Guy McPherson about methane in the upper atmosphere and unfortunately technology was not my friend that day. The audio did not record. So while I read you some information from articles, I'll just run a little of the video from Guy and I chatting in the background. To really set the tone, I would like to read from Science News, Arctic Upper Atmospheric Research Journal. The article is entitled, Noctilucent Clouds Connected to Greenhouse Gases. The author, Jeff Thayer. I believe this was written somewhere around 2004, give or take, because it was written during the period of time that Mr. Thayer was working at Stanford Research Institute in conjunction with the Sonderstrom Laboratory located in Greenland. Data over the past 30 years indicate that the number of noctilucent cloud occurrences has nearly doubled and in the past few years noctilucent clouds have been seen over the central U.S. near 40 degrees north, the lowest latitudes yet recorded. Noctilucent clouds are the highest clouds in the Earth's atmosphere, forming in the upper mesosphere at an average altitude of 82 kilometers. At most a few kilometers thick, noctilucent clouds form in both polar regions during their respective summer months. The two main factors leading to NLC formation are an increase in water vapor and or a decrease in the local temperature. Atmospheric methane and carbon dioxide levels directly affect noctilucent cloud formation through these two factors. Methane is an important source of mesospheric water vapor. Tropospheric water vapor is prevented from dispersing into the mesosphere by the cold trap of the tropopause, while methane, once transported into the upper atmosphere, can form water vapor by interacting with atomic oxygen and hydroxyl radicals. Roughly speaking, each methane molecule leads to two water molecules. The twofold increase in methane concentrations over the industrial era may, therefore, partly explain the increase in noctilucent cloud observations. NASA started what is called the AIM project to study upper atmospheric conditions, and the lead investigator the principal investigator for that AIM project is one Professor James Russell of Hampton University. He says, It turns out that meteoroids play an important role in the formation of NLCs. Specks of debris from disintegrating meteors act as nucleating points where water molecules can gather and crystallize. Back in the 19th century, NLCs were confined to high latitudes. You had to go to Alaska or Scandinavia to see them. In recent years, however, they have been sighted as far south as Utah, Colorado, Nebraska, and Oregon. Some researchers believe that the spread of NLCs is a sign of climate change. One of the greenhouse gases that has become more abundant in Earth's atmosphere since the 19th century is methane. Quote, when methane makes its way into the upper atmosphere, 
It is oxidized by a complex series of reactions to form water vapor, says Dr. Russell. This extra water vapor is then available to grow ice crystals for the NLCs. And from an article put out by NASA, courtesy of Brian Whitaker, Hanging 53 miles above Mother Earth, these so-called night-shining clouds undulate above the western horizon, poised, quote, at the edge of space itself, circling the north and south poles, unquote. They are formed by water droplets that crystallize around what NASA calls meteor smoke. Whereas they used to stick to extreme latitudes, over the past few years, the clouds' range has been expanding. Nowadays, they are often seen as far south as Colorado and Virginia. This is thought to be partly because of a preponderance of the greenhouse gas methane, which gets oxidized in the upper atmosphere, forming water vapor. That, in turn, grows the requisite ice crystals for the cloud formation. Back in the summer of 2014, sitting on my sister's deck in Oregon, I was mesmerized by some very etheric, amazing, electric blue clouds that were shining long after the sun had set. A few days later, I read an article about the noctilucent clouds that had been seen over London, and there was a picture. And by Jove, that picture looked just like what I'd seen. So I started researching. Some of what I'm sharing now is the result of me having kept my finger kind of on the pulse of noctilucent clouds over the last year. And a bit later in this program, to wrap it up, I will play a collage of some beautiful pictures by amazing people who have captured these images around the world, and many thanks to them. The next article I would like to read an excerpt from. It's put together by Sam Karana and posted in December of 2013. The title, Noctilucent Clouds, Further Confirmation of Large Methane Releases. Back in September 2013, extremely high methane readings were recorded over the heights of Antarctica these high methane readings over Antarctica have not been discussed much among climate scientists, let alone in the media. Yet, large methane releases can contribute significantly to climate change, given methane's high potency as a greenhouse gas. Furthermore, the vast amounts of methane contained in the permafrost comes with the danger that, as global warming continues, such releases could increase in a non-linear way. Noctilucent clouds could confirm that such emissions have indeed taken place from Antarctica. Methane will rise in the atmosphere, turning into water vapor as it rises up in the sky, and form ice crystals around meteor smoke at approximately 83 kilometers altitude, showing up as noctilucent clouds. It takes a while for methane to rise up to such altitudes, making it hard to pinpoint which methane releases are responsible for these noctilucent clouds. As methane rises, it tends to move closer to the equator, which is another reason to conclude that these noctilucent clouds are the result of large amounts of methane that have been released from the heights of Antarctica earlier in 2013. As such high methane concentrations transform into water vapor and carbon dioxide, they may no longer register as methane on satellite measurements, yet they will continue to contribute to global warming. Therefore, large methane releases should be closely monitored, even if they do not appear to immediately translate into mean global methane level rise. From an article published in June of 2014 by Malcolm Light, Harold Hensel, and Sam Karana, entitled, Arctic Atmospheric Methane Global Warming Veil. Methane formed by organisms in the water becomes trapped in the fabric of water ice crystals when it freezes and is stable below about 300 meters depth in the Arctic Ocean. 
There are such massive methane reserves below the Arctic Ocean floor that they represent around a hundred times the amount that is required to cause a Permian-style major extinction event should the subsea Arctic methane be released into the atmosphere. There are also giant reserves of mantle methane originally sealed in by shallow methane hydrate plugs in fractures cutting the Arctic sea floor. Unfortunately for us, global warming has heated up the ocean currents fed by the Gulf Stream flowing into the Arctic, causing massive destabilization of the subsea methane hydrates and fault seals and releasing increasing volumes of methane directly into the atmosphere. If only a few percent of the subsea methane hydrate reserves in the Arctic Ocean, some thousand billion tons of carbon, is dissociated and the methane is released into the atmosphere, it will cause total deglaciation and a major extinction event. The energy necessary to produce these Arctic methane release rates is relatively small. It requires only about one thousandth of the heat energy input from the Gulf Stream to dissociate the methane hydrates. Furthermore, the energy necessary to produce these Arctic methane release rates represents less than one millionth of the global warming heat energy being added to the oceans, ice, land, and atmosphere by human fossil fuel burning. The whole northern hemisphere is now covered by a thickening atmospheric methane veil that is spreading southwards at about one kilometer a day, and it already totally envelopes the United States. A giant hole in the equatorial ozone layer has also been discovered in the West Pacific, which acts like an elevator transferring methane from lower altitudes to the stratosphere, where it already forms a dense equatorial global warming stratospheric band that is spreading into the polar regions. The spreading atmospheric methane global warming veil is raising the temperature of the lower atmosphere many times faster than carbon dioxide does. In 2012, Lonnie Cumberland's physics PhD work supported viewing noctilucent clouds as a possible miner's canary for climate change. And so, having given you a bit of factual information, I invite you to just enjoy the beauty of these spectacular night shining dragon's breaths. I'm Ivy Cohn. Thanks for watching. Until next time.